You need to build Yukon because you might have just pulled a Yunlin in your account, or maybe you got scammed by your 50 50 and got a Clara instead. But I do think that Yukon can be a very solid addition to your account, especially because of all the things that she can nice. actually do. And while, yes, yeah, she has some problems, Brywin ranks her at tier 4 on their list, and I honestly do think that the reasons they give her for that ranking are pretty good reasonings on their own. Not because she's bad by any means, it's just because she is super hard to play, she requires E6, she requires a lot of investment to actually get her working but whenever you can get her working whenever you understand her kit and how to play her she absolutely pops off so we'll be talking about all of that in today's video and skip this part if you're allergic to big beautiful busty waifus like this guy is right here and also guys come on just look at this foxy and mommy right here she has one of the fluffiest tails out there look at these things right here them thighs or something else and she also plays incredibly hard to get which is all things that we love so guys let's talk about her skill first because this is the thing that a lot of people misuse so this skill gives you two stacks of Roaring Bowstring, which increases your whole party's attack by 80%. But the caveat with this is every time one of your characters goes, you lose one of these stacks. So you don't want her to go before, say, one of your sustained characters or your other support character on the team. You want her directly going before any of your DPS goes. This is the most essential way to run her. On top of this, with it only lasting for two of your characters' turns, she is very SP and efficient in this way, so you do have to manage skill points very, very actively with her. But the skill also does play with the ultimate move because first of all, the ultimate move will be targeting one enemy on the field. We'll talk about the damage in a second here. But it'll also be giving your Roaring Bowstring stacks an additional crit rate and crit damage buff. Crit rate around 28% and crit damage around 65%, which is absolutely massive, which is yet another reason why speed tuning is so important because you want to make sure this matches up with your DPS going. Now, there are ways to help alleviate this, right? So say you have her E6. E6 absolutely massive because it gives you one stack of Roaring Bowstring whenever you use her ultimate move, meaning if you're on an ally's turn, your DPS turn, say she gets out of sync, you can go ahead and use that ultimate move and immediately give them the attack, crit rate, and crit damage buff, which is going to be oh so juicy. But let's go back to the damage part of this, because she actually can do quite a bit of damage here, guys, and a good amount of toughness as well, which kind of makes her like a sub DPS, or you can build her like a sub DPS anyways. And while yes, the talent won't help her like ultimate move out, it helps her basic attack out, basically make you break the enemy shields even faster, because it's going to be increasing your basic attack toughness reduction from 10 to 20 for one use this basically happens every single time you have a turn and use or basic attack which you will be using because like i said she can be skill point inefficient so you don't technically use her skill every single turn you kind of want to time it up correctly when you're actually going to use it when you can get big bursts of damage in on the enemy so this is going to be very nice just for breaking that enemy shield down and on top of this she's going to also have some additional things in her kit that help her out quite a bit with this first of all guys she can resist one crowd control debuff by herself pretty easy there not that much to talk about but one thing that she heavily relies on on is going to be her A6 ability, which whenever you have Roaring Bowstrings active and your allies use an action, this will be giving her two extra energy. Also, I would recommend upgrading all the max HP stats. Her max HP is kind of low and she will die if you do not invest into the HP because she is a squishy one and you all know those Foxians love taking every single hit on the field. I think it's because they're so beautiful, lush thick and fluffy little tails. Oh my god. Let me stop cooming out now. I really want to quickly go over the Eidolons because Eidolons are super important as well. I do recommend using her at E6. I think she is an E6 must use because you lose so much efficiency when she's not E6. Like I mentioned before, her E6 gives her one Roaring Bowstring whenever you use the ult, which means you don't have to time everything up with the skill move because sometimes when you get out of whack, you get hit with a speed debuff or something. It throws your whole team out of whack and she is very reliant on speed tuning. This makes you have to worry about speed tuning even less. On top of this, guys, her E4 allows her to become a sub DPS because you will be doing 30% more damage when you have Roaring Bowstrings active, which if you have E6, this will automatically happen with your ultimate move. It automatically does 30% extra damage. But that's kind of all I want to touch on, on the kit. We'll talk about how to play her a little bit later in the video. So I really briefly want to go over her best light cones because she does have a couple light cones she can use. I think her best in slot light cone is probably going to be Dance Dance Dance. Why? Because this will just advance for the action of the whole team whenever she's using the ultimate move. It's not relying on you buffing the allies with her ultimate move because she does not do that at all. Instead, this just advances everyone's action forward, which should keep them in the same place, just makes them a bit faster, shouldn't mess up speed tuning. Number two is going to be Memories of the Past because this increases her weakness break efficiency and on top of this will be giving her extra energy back whenever she launches an attack. The reason I mention this is because she does do a lot of toughness damage to the enemy, so sometimes you will be breaking with her. So having this light cone here will increase that break damage even more so she can be even more like a sub DPS. And then also Meshing Cogs can obviously work 
work here as well. This will help her getting energy back up so, so much. Honestly, I prefer using meshing cogs and memories of the past over the other light cones just because it allows me to get my energy back up so much more efficiently with her. Also, I know people in the comment section will ask, can I use Brian's light cone? I really don't recommend Brian's light cone because Brian's light cone re requires you to put a buff on the allies from the ultimate, which she doesn't do because she attacks on target and then gives them roaring bowstring if you have them e6. So that's not really going to apply much here. I really wouldn't recommend using Brian's light cone here. Just save that for another one of your Harmon units. Now that's all that I want to touch on as far as those light cones go. So let's now go ahead and talk about her best relic sets. Then we'll talk about stats and then how to play her after that. But before we hop into that, make sure you hit the subscribe button because you might have watched at this point in the video or maybe I scammed you because you clicked on a timestamp. If you want to see some thick voluptuous mommy like Miss Yukong right here, then please hit that subscribe button gamers. I would really, really appreciate it. My level for her is level 70 of 80 and she's still popping off for me, surely. So hit that subscribe button now. Let's go ahead and talk about those relics because I do think the best two piece set for her guys is going to be the two piece hacker space and two piece of whatever attack sets you want to run, whether that be the prisoner of deep confinement, musketeer, new follow up set that's in the game. I think any of these sets can work for her because they first of all give her a base attack stat and then she's getting some extra speed as well. Now, this is only if you're running a fast Yukong, like I mentioned, we'll talk about speed tuning a little bit later. You might want to run her slow in this case, you wouldn't want to run a two piece speed here. You would rather just run something that's full on attack or just like damaging for her. So, like a two piece bandit, two piece of the attack set could work here as well, especially if you're running her slow or you have the speed requirements already that you need for the team without running the two piece of the hacker space. Like I said, there's a lot of different ways you can run her. It really depends on her speed. Speed is everything for your Yukong, but these are the sets that I recommend as far as the four piece sets go. Now let's go ahead and talk about the two piece sets. I think her best in slot two piece set is going to be Keel. Why? Because it, first of all, it gives her some effect threats. So she'll get some debuffs off her. Oh my God. If she gets a dot on her and she just gets eaten up alive by that, good GG buddy. That, that shit's going to work real nice for you. Other than that though, guys, I, it does give you a crit damage buff for the whole team as well, which she's already kind of giving with her ultimate move. Ageless can work here as well, especially if you cannot reach the HP requirement that you need to reach with her. Like if she's dying a lot, then Ageless can work here. And on top of that, it does give an attack boost for the rest of the team. Now, one final set I want to recommend is if you're running her as a DPS, like a main DPS, I guess sub DPS, uh, Yukong, then you would be wanting to run a South Auto here. Why? It increases ultimate damage. That's where your damage is coming from. Run South Auto. Pretty low base requirement of 50% crit rate to actually activate it. It gives her some crit rate as well. And then overall just helps reduce some more damage to that ultimate move. Now, before we actually hop into these stats, I want to talk about speed tuning because what these stats are going to depend on how your team is built, right? So as a basic breakdown for speed tuning guys, you either want her to be the fastest person on the team or the slowest person on the team, but it really depends on where your DPS are at, right? If your DPS are like maybe like say three and four in rotation, then you would technically want her to be the second person and then whoever you're sustaining is be the first person or vice versa. You want your DPS to move right after she moves, right? That's why slow Yukong is kind of recommended here because if your DPS are the fastest people in your team, that means she can be the slowest person on your team. That means they should be the next in line getting that buff from her so that means you can use her skill move for roaring bowstrings and then they get that as well but we'll talk more about that when we talk about how to play her because this is probably going to be a pretty long video and i don't want to make it longer than it has to be okay so talk about those main and subsets now personally what i recommend speed hp or attack percentage on the boots on the body is going to be hp or crit on the rope is going to be err and then finally on the orb is going to be hp or imaginary the reason why i recommend these stats and why they're so varied is really going to depend on what team you have her on right if you're running on a fast team and you need to be fast, obviously speed boots. If you want to be slow, don't put her on a speed boot. Simple as that, guys. Don't overcomplicate her kit because I know speed tuning sounds complicated. It's really just get number higher than this number here to make her work. That's the basic premise of how it works, right? For those subsets, guys, I recommend speed, HP, defense, and effect res. For a sub DPS build, I recommend speed, crit rate, crit damage, attack percentage, and any defensive stats that you can give her. Like I said, she can be ran in multiple different ways, so run either of these two options here depending on whatever path you want to take her down. Obviously, this build today is really just going to be showcasing her as like a supportive type character and not a sub DPS. Now let's go ahead and talk about some of the teams she can work well with. Like I said, she is very good with like backloaded damage dealers. So if you're running on a team with like Yoon Lee and also Clara, she can work pretty well on both of those teams, especially being last in rotation, able to hit the roaring bowstring off. Your Clara and Yoon Lee will get the damage bonus when the enemies attack them and they do their follow-up attacks, which is going to increase their damage potential exponentially. Also, she can work pretty well on like crit based teams as well, as long as you're not using 
that much SP with her. I would recommend putting her on a team with Sparkle if you're running her with anyone else just because she does consume so much SP and Sparkle can help alleviate those issues that you're having with her or help out more with those issues that you're having with her, right? Like Dragon Danny works because she gives an imaginary damage bonus. Dr. Ratio can also work here as well because he's imaginary damage and then also she helps with the weakness break which gives an extra debuff for Dr. Ratio to work with there even faster. So that's another viable option for you to use. But let me stop jabbering. Let me talk about how you should actually be playing her in battle. I guess so I'm going to quickly break down to you how she actually plays. God willing, we don't kill these people too fast. So as you know, we start with two Roaring Bow Strings. We're not actually not going to use a skill right here. Sometimes it's more beneficial to use a skill here, especially if you're getting the damage like your next couple turns. But in this case, uh, we're not really looking for that much damage right now. Realistically, we would probably like for Dr. Ratio to be a little bit faster than Topaz because he's going to be putting out more of the damage up front here. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing BAM! Hit that guy there. We're just going to get some energy efficiency there, some really some SP efficiency because very SP hungry. We're just going to do a basic attack here. Not really too worried about it. We're going to get ult up, but we're going to hostage ult. The reason we're going to hostage ult is because we want to make sure all of our burst damage is done within the time frame of Yukong's ultimate move. So how do we do this? By hostaging ults when we can hostage ults, right? I mean, that's the best way to describe it, right? Numi's going to go again. See, that would have been two times Numi hit out of her ultimate move, right? Or if we'd activated it before, right? So that's why we're hostaging the ult right now. We're going to wait for her turn to come around, but we still won't use it then. I'll, I'll talk about that when we actually get to it, though. Now, this is going to be super, super important, guys. We're going to go ahead and use Yukon skill here. It's going to give us one extra turn. Now, we're still not going to use her ult. What we're going to be doing here is we're going to be do using a basic attack. We'll be waiting for this to go down by one turn. Wait for that to happen. That's fine. Now, what we're going to do is, well, since, first of all, we don't want to break the shield with that, right? We're going to go ahead and hit the ult on this guy right here. This brings us back up to two turns right now, which is going to be very beneficial for us. Now, what we'll do, we're going to activate her ult, or I guess Topaz's ult here, because it all is going to be lining up here. We're just going to aim for as much damage as humanly possible against these two people right here. So, first things first, what we're going to do is we're going to hit this guy right here with this, right? Follow-up attack, guaranteed. Now, look. It's still not down by a stack yet, so we'll still get the ultimate damage here. This person should die, right? Like, they should die right here. We're going to go ahead and hit the ultimate attack over here. The reason we're hitting the ultimate attack on this guy over here is because I know we can get some more damage out this way, especially if we do something like this right here. Bam! Falling down. He's going to get another follow-up attack. Bam! Nice there. The Topaz going in. About to kill this guy. Okay, that's fine. Uh, now we have one stack left. What we're going to be using this one stack for right here is actually hitting this guy right here. And if my calculations are correct, he should still have the buff up, which means we still get that follow-up attack there. But that's the basic premise of how this is going to work, right? So now we're going to do, let's go ahead and burn a skill point, get her ultimate almost back up again. Uh, any follow-up attack that happens now is that everyone's going to be getting the attack buff still, right? So that's going to be nice. That's the reason why I think she does work very well on like backloaded teams. Like all this damage is coming from backloaded attacks, which means you can kind of compress all of that damage into one string of attack so what we're gonna do is i'm actually not gonna use her buff right now i'm gonna use a basic attack just because of the fact I, there's no point of using a skill point here we have to play with her smart right and the basic breakdown of what you're doing guys is literally just working up to do your big burst of damage all right guys let's go ahead and break down this last burst of damage here for this video so like i said concerning her skill points here we're gonna wait for this to go off right bam that's gone now since that's gone we're gonna go ahead and use her ultimate move we're gonna go ahead and use topaz's ultimate move as well so we go ahead and get Noombi into action here. Then we will be using Dr. Ratio's ultimate move. Hopefully killing her, knocking her out of the equation here. Bam, nice. Bamboozle that motherfucker for real. Uh, and then we'll be attacking with this too. So now he should be getting two uh, of his follow-up attacks out on her. Bam, nice 69k is what it is. Wait, oh my gosh, cringe. It's alright. We're going to be losing another stack. Bam, that's going to go through. Uh... Noombie goes through easy 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 she's gonna be a back around so we could technically if oh no never mind I, I was about to say maybe we could do it but uh, he came back around but regardless we should oh damn no see look timing is everything guys even though we did do a big chunk of damage there and we did like alt f4 delete the enemy there uh now Noombie's not gonna have the buff here or any attack buff for that matter so it's all a matter of timing, guys. Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. Are you going to be building your Yukong? Let me know in the comment section down below. I think she works best on back-loaded damaging teams, which I, that makes me think she's going to be better in the future because a lot of our teams now are a lot more back-loaded-esque damage where you can kind of compile all of your damage into one big bursty mode, which you would normally get anyways. Like, with this team, you don't really have to hostage as much as you would with other teams you maybe would have to do that with. Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one, guys. Later, bye-bye.